My name is Hans Kurtis. I'm from Huntington Beach, and I just wanted to address um, something. It seems to be a myth that we were founded as a Christian nation, and John Adams, the second president of the United States, signed a Treaty of Tripoli in 1797, which stated, as the government of the United States is not, in any sense, founded on the Christian religion. He also wrote, in the formation of the American government, it will never be pretended that any person employed in that service had their interviews with the gods or were in any degree under the influence of heaven. These governments were contrived merely by the use of reason and senses. He wrote this as a defense of the uh, Constitution of the Government of the United States of America in 1788. So please, I urge you not to, to vote no on the In God We Trust resolution. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mary Lynn Fader. I live at 18512 Valley Drive here in Villa Park. And I had no intention of speaking on this subject tonight, but I think it's very sad that nobody else from Villa Park, with the exception of one young man who's not sure of his address, has stood up <laughs> in support of what I consider to be a very common uh, motto. And I assume that all of you people from outside Villa Park who took the time to come here still use the money. And it says, in God we trust. So what's wrong with putting it on the wall? I think you've blown this completely out of proportion. I'm just amazed that, that you are so upset about it. I feel sorry for you. That's it. Thank you. Hello, members of the council. Uh, I'm also from Irvine, and I live at 571 East Peltison. And I just thought I would point out that in God What's We Trust. What's your name, please? Huh? What's your name, please? Anthony Nguyen. Yeah. Oh, Thank sorry. <laughs> I thought I would point out that In God We Trust was not printed on money until after the Civil War, and it was not ever the original official motto of the United States. Thank you. Terry Brooks Elmendorf, 10291 Camden Circle. I wasn't going to get up and speak either. But uh, I, not too many people know, I have found out uh, when I've discussed this, but there are four verses to the national anthem, and I believe it is in the final verse. Uh, it says, then conquer we must when our cause is just, and this be our motto, in God is our trust. Thank you. Well, are there any other people that would like to speak to that? Seeing none, I'll turn to my council and get some comments from them. I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> Jim? Okay. Start us off. Uh, I understand why people would want In God We Trust. It is our national motto. It was made the national motto, I think, in 1956, and there were particular reasons at that time, which I won't go into. Uh, I would feel more comfortable with e pluribus unum, which I think is a very strong motto, and as one of the gentlemen said, out of many, one, and this is what this country is. I would also be uh, more likely to have, uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. I think that is a strong message also, and it's a united message. In fact, both of them, e pluribus unum, and we hold these truths to be self-evident, are both uniting uh, mottos. Whereas in God we trust, many of us believe in it. Many of us believe in God. I believe in God, but there are others uh, of different religions that have different gods. There are those that don't believe in God, and I do feel it is divisive, and the other two alternatives, if we want to show our pa patriotism, are better alternatives. Thank you, <laughs> Any other comments? Did we get any comments that were mailed uh, to the city or emailed to the city uh, aside from uh, this group that's represented here this evening? Oh, 
Uh, the you? majority of comments actually went to the council members. They were not uh, copied to the city, though today there was one from uh, Sozell's Zell. and uh, Carol Kawanami. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe both of those were put in the mailbox. Okay. They were. So, yeah. I, I received about seven or eight uh, against it. You know, this is such an emotional issue. There's, there's the emotional side and there's the logical side. The logical side is that in 1976 or whenever it was, uh, the Supreme Court, or 70 I guess it was, the Supreme Court said it's part of a motto. And it is a motto. Uh, so that's the logical side. The emotional side I can understand. So I think that we ought to do what Mr. Fautura suggested, because this is a hot potato. No matter how you vote, you know, you're going to offend somebody, and we don't want to offend anybody. So what I think we ought to do is let's put it on the ballot. Uh, and and you know, that's the fair way to do it. And we have a, an election <coughs> coming out in November. Put it on the ballot, and let's let the people decide. I have a oh, go Sorry, ahead. I had a question. Now, I had asked you earlier uh, about what it cost to put an item on the uh, a ballot, and you told me $1,500, I believe. If it's in conjunction with the general election, uh, is that still the same price? Cause that, that is a, a price associated with a uh, merging it with another election. So, um, And that was based on, I believe it was around $1,300 and change for uh, a measure the city put on in the last election cycle. So it would be, you know, thirteen hundred to fifteen hundred dollars. And again, uh, it could be uh, advisory or it could be binding. Well, if I if I may interject, maybe we could take a collection, and if we can get fifteen hundred dollars or whatever it is, we'll put it on the ballot. So we'll we'll you know put it on the Eat Network and say, hey, do you want to vote on this? If you want to vote on this, send us five dollars or contribute to the kitty or something if there's a concern about spending the money mm -hmm. but I gotta tell you I have no concern about spending the money what I want to do is what everybody wants us to do mm -hmm. and as I say logically I don't think that you can complain about it but emotionally I could certainly understand the position so I say let's get it on the ballot Mayor Reese yes uh, I'm kind of having flashback a little bit <laughs> last year when we tried to get the invocation uh, which is something that every city pretty much does I, I think Irvine is one of the cities that does not have an invocation I find that interesting um, what what I did because I knew we were going to have a lot of people come forward that were opposed to this was I kind of put an informal poll out there to <coughs> see what kind of feedback I would get from the residents and it was an overwhelming yes it was overwhelmingly yes and so I actually think that um, it's a government of the people, by the people, for the people, and that government, local government, should reflect the sensibilities of the local people. And I think the only way for us to truly find out whether the majority feels that way, and majority still rules, majority still rules, doesn't mean that we disrespect those that are in the minority, but, they, but the majority still gets to make the decision. I, I absolutely think that uh, the idea of placing it on the ballot before the before the people is the way to go. Me too. Yeah. I'll move it. I think. Does anybody see can we speak to that comment? That's a whole different issue than what's been brought up before. Can we speak to that? You haven't closed um, the public hearing, so sure. Yeah. I have not spoken yet. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, go ahead, yes. My name is Alexander Almoyan. I live at 17702 Serrano Avenue, Villa Park. I've been a Villa Park resident for over 20 years. Putting on a ballot to me is absurd, and I'll tell you why. There's a time in this country, not too long ago, that if you put on a ballot the proposition that blacks should pay an additional fee, it would have passed. There are many places, many places in the South that would have passed a resolution like that. Putting it on a ballot doesn't make it right. 